In today's talk, we're going to extend the technique of simple generating functions uh, to a few new problems. We'll start with the coin problem. In how many ways can we make 40 cents using only dimes, nickels, and quarters, 10 cent, 5 cent, or 25 cent pieces? Well, if we're only going to use dimes, nickels, and quarters, we can first see that we can't use more than four dimes or eight nickels, and we certainly can't even use two quarters, so we can use at most one quarter. This would be an important observation because we'll create our generating function where the power of x in the generating function will, will represent the number of cents contributed by the particular coin. For example, we'll start with this first factor here, 1 plus x to the 25th power. The x to the 25th power, power will represent using 1 quarter. And if that, fact, if that term from this first factor gets chosen, it will add 25 to the exponent of the resulting product that involves that term. The 1, in every case, you can think of as x to the 0th power. That will represent use no quarters. Uh, this second factor will correspond to dimes. And you can see we can e use either 0 dimes, 1 dime, that will contribute 10 cents, the uh, power of x to the 10th, 2 dimes for 20 cents, 3 dimes, or 4 dimes. The final factor will represent the nickels, and we can use either zero nickels, one nickel, two nickels, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight nickels. What will happen when we just use the rules of algebra to expand this product of the three polynomials? Well, every term in the expansion will correspond to a choice of one of the terms from this first factor times one of the terms from the second factor times one of the terms from the third factor. And as I already said, the term from the first factor will be represent either no quarters or one quarter. The term from the second factor will tell us how many dimes we use, zero through four. And the term from the third factor will tell us how many nickels we use. And once we choose a term from each, for example, this one, this one, and this one, that will say use one quarter, one dime, and one nickel, that will be a total of 40 cents which is what we're looking for. So that shows there's, there's one way to make 40 cents, and we'll have a term that will be x to the 40th power, x to the 25th times x to the 10th times x to the 5th. If instead we use the 1 quarter, 3 dimes, and 1 nickel, we would clear, clearly get 60 cents and a term that looks like x to the 60th power. When we multiply these three polynomials together, we'll get a whole bunch of different terms with different powers of x. Each time the power of x will represent the total amount of money from the selection of how many quarters, how many dimes, and how many nickels. And the coefficient, the number of ways, the coefficient will represent the number of ways to get that amount of money. Now, how do we multiply these together? You could use synthetic multiplication, which we learned in the last lecture. Or, of course, we just tell the computer to multiply it together. So this is by computer. I told it to multiply these three factors together, and I get this big old polynomial. What do we want to do? We want to look at the coefficient of x to the 40th, that number 7. And that tells us there will be seven different ways to get 40 cents. We saw one of them already, but I'll leave it to you to try to find all the others. Somehow when everything's being multiplied together, this just has counted those seven ways. What do all these other numbers tell us? The one, the one times x to the fifth, the two times x to the tenth, the two times x to the fifteenth, etc. Well, this one generating function tells us the answer to a lot of different questions. It tells us how many ways we can make 40 cents out of nickels, dimes, and quarters, but it also tells how many ways we can make 35 cents. There are six of those. 30 cents, 25 cents, 20 cents, 5 cents. There's only one way to do that. Use a single nickel. 
or one which will represent x to the zeroth. No sense. Don't use any coins. Now, what about these numbers bigger than 40? Well, look up here, this 7 times x to the 45. We have to be a little bit careful. Is that the number of ways to make 45 cents with nickels, dimes, and quarters? The answer is not exactly. That tells us how many ways we can make 45 cents with at most 4 dimes, 8 nickels, and 1 quarter. If we want the actual number of ways to make 45 cents, it would be 1 greater because there's 1 extra that involves just 9 nickels that's not included here, since we only restricted ourselves to having at most 8 nickels. Similarly, similarly, this 4 times x to the 80th is not the number of ways of making 80 cents. There are an awful lot of those. You can imagine what you would have to do to find those. Think about what generating function you would use. But that number 4, the coefficient on x to the 80th, tells us the number of ways to make 80 cents. just with these available coins. At most four dimes, eight nickels, and one quarter. Similarly, there's uh, one times 105. There's only one way to make a dollar and five using these coins, and it should be obvious what that is. It's to use all the coins. Use all eight nickels, use all four dimes, and use the quarter. Can we find out how many total ways we can make change for a dollar? And now let's talk about the most general problem, at least with U.S. currency. How many ways can we make change for a dollar using any coins that we have available? That means we have pennies, one cent coins, nickels, dimes, quarters. We have half dollars and one dollar coins as well. Many of you might never have used half dollars. Those have been, uh, those are pretty old. They haven't been new ones in a long time at least not new designs. I think the Mint still prints them, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, these are lots of different coins. And how could we represent a generating function for that? Well, we could look at a factor for the pennies. This could be written as 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up to x to the 100th. I just wrote it in compact form as a sum from n equals 0 to 100 of x to the nth power. This will represent... The second factor will represent the nickels. We can use up to 20 of those to make a dollar. Here we'll have the dimes and the quarters, the half dollars, and the dollars. Notice for the half dollars, we either use zero, one, or two of them. For the dollar, we use, either use zero or one of them. And now this already has 101 terms. This one has 21 terms. This is an absolutely huge polynomial. And when I told my computer to multiply these all together, you see what it gave me. And this isn't even the whole thing. It actually keeps going all the way up to a term at the end, which is x to the 600th, because you'll see there's one way to make $6 using at most 100 pennies, 20 nickels, 10 dimes, 4 quarters, 2 half dollars, and 1 dollar. That's to use all of those coins. So at the very end, this is just a whole bunch of terms all the way up to x to the 600th. And what number tells us how many ways there are to make change for a dollar? Well, here we go. The x to the 100th term, there are exactly 293 ways to make change for a dollar using these standard American coins. Just for fun someday, try to write down what they all are. And if you want to know the number of ways of making any number, change for any number of cents up to a dollar, you just see all, <coughs> all of those right here as the coefficient on the appropriate power of x. Once we start getting more than a dollar, it doesn't answer the question, how many ways are there to make change for that amount of money? Instead, it answers the question, how many ways are there to make change for that amount of money? For example, the coefficient on x to the 600 tells you s answers, how many ways can you make change for $6? If you're only allowed to use up to 100 pennies, up to 20 nickels, up to 10 dimes, up to four quarters, up to two half dollars, and up to one dollar coin. And of course, then the answer, as we've already said, is just one. Use all the coins. Even this, these 292s, 
for a dollar one and a dollar two are not exactly right because if you want it, they don't tell you exactly how many ways to make change for those amounts of money because we could use more than a hundred pennies. And this generating function is designed to use at most 100 pennies. Now, if we wanted to allow ourselves to use up to 600 pennies, up to 120 nickels, 60 dimes, etc., we could find out the total number of ways to make change for $6. Say you go to a bank with six $1 bills and you want coinage in return. You could compute using a generating function, not this one, but one that used, as I said, up to 600 ones, 120 nickels, 600 pennies, I'm sorry, up to 120 nickels, etc. You could find out it's a really huge number of ways to make change for $6. Which now brings us to the question, can we generalize this? And we've already talked about partitions. So we want to know how can we count partitions? We've already learned some methods of talking about the partition number, PMN, the number of numerical partitions of the number M into N positive parts. In other words, we want to write the number m as a sum of n positive integers. If we don't care how many integers we use, we just want to write the number m as, as a sum of other integers, we can define p, p of m to be pm1 plus pm2 all the way up to pmm. This is just the total number of ways to write the number m as the sum of positive integers. They would include 1 plus 1 plus 1 m times and just the number m itself. Can we create a generating function for p of m? Well, we're going to see next time that we can actually do this, write a single generating function to generate all the numbers p of m for any m. But today we're just going to limit ourselves to a, a simpler question. What if we just want to find p of 7? And we know we don't care about anything bigger than that. Well then, if we're writing 7 as a sum of positive integers, we can use at most 7 ones, at most 3 twos, 4 twos would already be too many, at most 2 threes, and we could use possibly 1 4 or 1 5 or 1 6 or 1 7, but not 2 of any of those. So we're going to create a generating function, I'll call that g of x, which is this sum, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 7th. This will represent the number of 1s. And when I choose how many 1s, the 1 here would represent 0 1s, the x would represent 1 1, the x squared would represent 2 1s, up to x to the 7th which would represent 7 1s, the power on the x will represent the total contribution from the ones. In this case, it's just the number of ones. But when I choose how many twos, I could choose zero twos, one two, two twos, or three twos. The exponent will represent the total contribution to the final sum from that many twos. This factor here will represent how many threes, this one from the fours, remember I'll take either no fours or one four, and the power of the x, either x to the zeroth power or x to the fourth power, the power of the x will represent the total contribution from the fours in my sum, five, sixes, and sevens. Now, how could you multiply these all together? It's really not that hard, and you should try it as a good exercise. You can use synthetic multiplication, and every one of you, in five minutes or less, probably quite a bit less, uh, could multiply this all together entirely by hand using synthetic multiplication. You'll need a big piece of paper, maybe two, and just you'll go bam, 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 follow the rules, <coughs> get the product. Or I could do that on my computer, and here's what I get, the full product here on my computer written in, in powers of x, starting with the biggest and going to the smallest. Somehow my computer likes to write things that way. 
what is the answer to our original question? Well, p of 7 will be exactly the coefficient of x to the 7th in this generating function. There are 15 ways of writing 7 as a sum of positive integers. Try to write them all down and really give it a shot. 15 isn't that many. I'll just write a few for you. We already mentioned 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. You could also write it as 7. You could also write it as 1 plus 1 plus 5. And there are a whole bunch. In fact, there are exactly 15 of them. But again, be careful. What does this 5 times x to the 37th mean? It doesn't mean there are it doesn't mean that p of 37 is 5. What it tells you is there are exactly 5 ways to write 37 as a sum of at most 7 1s, at most 3 2s, at most 2 3s, at most 1 4, 1 5, 1 6, or 1 7. You could probably write down all of the ways to write 37 as a sum in that manner. Let's modify the question a bit. What if we want to compute p sub 2 of 7? What do I mean by p sub 2 of 7? I mean the number of ways to write 7 as a sum of positive numbers, each at least 2. Well, at least 2 just means we're not using 1s and everything else is the same as before. So here we're just going to use 2s, 3s, 4s, 5, 6s, and 7s. And at, just like before, we can use at most 3 2s to get 7, at most 2 3s, at most 1 4, 1 5, 1 6, or 1 7. So the generating function will be identical to the previous one, except that we're not allowed to use 1s anymore. So I've left off the term that involves 1s. And this one's much easier than the previous one. You could use synthetic multiplication to multiply that out very easily. And we get this generating function, which I'll call g sub 2 of x. And remember, this is just to compute p sub 2 of 7. It won't give us the right answer for p sub 2 of 9 even, because we've limited the number of 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and 7s. If we wanted to compute p sub 2 of 9, we would have to allow another 2, we'd have to allow another 3, we'd have to allow another 4, we'd still have at most 1, 5, 6, 7, but we'd have to allow using an 8, and we'd have to allow using a 9. How many ways can you write 7 as a sum of 4? Sorry, how, can, how many ways are there write 7 as a sum of positive integers, each of which is at least 2? We look at the coefficient on x to the 7th, which is 4, p sub 2 of 7, equals 4. And here it's very easy to write down all the ways of writing 7 as a sum of numbers, each of which is at least 2. You could write 2 plus 5. You could write 2 plus 2 plus 3. You could write 3 plus 4. And the one we haven't done yet here is 7. These are all four ways of writing 7 as a sum of positive integers without using any ones. In other words, each one's at least 2. Try to convince yourself those are all the ways we can do it, and that's what gives us this 4 as a coefficient of x to the 7. Again, all the smaller ones, this 4 tells us p sub 2 of 6 is 4, p sub 2 of 5 is 2, p sub 2 of 4 is 2, 4 is just 4, or we could write it as 2 plus 2. Those are the only two ways to write 4 as a sum of 